Long gone are the days of investing in cannabis stocks that are based solely on hype and blue sky promises. In today's landscape, investors should be looking for companies that are generating profits with a management team that's executing on the goals they set out and ultimately built on solid fundamentals. CLS Holdings is a Las Vegas-based MSO that checks off all these boxes and is currently providing a great opportunity as it trades well below its peers. So in order to take a deeper dive into this company, we have the president and COO, Andrew Glashow. My good man, welcome. Thank you very much. Well, I'd love to just dive right into these questions because this is uh, a company that I first heard of when we first started speaking. And I started looking into you a little bit more. And there's a lot of information here I think investors should look into because unlike a lot of the can uh, Canadian cannabis companies, there are a lot of MSOs that are doing very good revenue, very good profit margins, and their market caps are not catching up to other peers. I believe this is the case, but I'd like to start off first by asking you, for those who maybe are hearing about CLS Holdings for the first time, can you give us the overview of your company and how you came into your role as president and COO? First of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's really great to be here. And it's also good to always see a smiling face uh, on the other end here. Um, so, CLS is a Nevada-based uh, entity with um, a dispensary uh, known as Oasis Cannabis, uh, which is located on Industrial, uh, which is um, right off the Las Vegas Strip. It's about a mile to mile and a half, uh, actually, from the um, uh, Wynn Hotel, if that's a, a location that people might be familiar with. We are open approximately uh, 20 hours a day. We see about 1,000 people a day come through our dispensary. We tend to cater to uh, the local uh, community. We have done so uh, since kind of uh, its its inception. Uh, we uh, came into being in around July of 2018, maybe between March and July of 2018, we officially kind of uh, took control. Uh, we felt that it needed an injection of some uh, what I'll call basic talent, some blocking and tackling, which we did. We came in. Uh, I assembled a, a uh, that team has executed at a high level. We've seen about a 4x growth in revenue in the last uh, three plus years. Uh, we've also seen about a 4 to 5x increase in the amount of people uh, that come through our doors. And uh, we are currently only open 20 hours a day. We used to be open 24 hours a day. Uh, but as it stands right now, as we come out of COVID, uh, staffing up properly uh, is difficult. And we are taking, I would say, our time to make sure that we've got the proper staff and proper servicing and so on and so forth uh, for all of the nice people that come and visit us on a daily basis. We also have another division. It's called City Trees. It's our wholesale division uh, where we manufacture, uh, produce a full, complete suite of products, uh, vapes, uh, tinctures, and concentrates. Our tinctures in the Nevada market are the number one selling tincture in the Nevada market. And similar to what we've accomplished at uh, Oasis, uh, we assembled a team. Uh, we built out a state-of-the-art laboratory over at uh, City Trees. Uh, we represent or we are represented in approximately 70% of all the dispensaries in Nevada. And we've taken that division from roughly about $150,000 a month, $160,000 a month to about $600,000 a month uh, since we've been uh, associated and involved. So we've seen very good growth. Additionally, we have now uh, migrated and or uh, we are exploiting an opportunity in New Mexico. Uh, we think New Mexico is one of the greatest markets uh, coming up here in 2022. Uh, it will be a full recreational market. So we like being in secondary and tertiary markets. Uh, we think that our experience that we've uh, gained and gleaned from uh, Nevada, which went from uh, medical only to recreational, we think that'll be helpful. And we have begun to bring our award-winning uh, uh, vapes, tinctures, and concentrates uh, into New Mexico with a great partner. Uh, our sales just started a few weeks ago, but we anticipate that uh, this will be a really, really good market for us. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if um, we get into 2022 if this doesn't represent a seven-figure uh, opportunity for us from a revenue standpoint. So we're really excited. Additionally, we've got a couple of other opportunities uh, that we're working on, one in our state of Nevada. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, an opportunity in the state of Massachusetts right now. And when we have um, more to say, uh, when we have uh, more to tell, if you will, concrete uh, evidence, we will uh, give that to the public on a full disclosure basis so that everybody knows it at the same time. 
Yeah, very exciting. I appreciate that that breakdown, especially for those who are hearing about your company for the first time. And you said the word revenue multiple times there, and, and what your team has gone um, been able to come into and really do with this company so far over these last few years. You know, I start off this interview speaking about uh, revenue and fundamentals as well, and really looking for a cannabis company that's generating profits. In the month of April alone, you did $2.2 million in net uh, revenue, that's USD, with 48% profit margins. On top of this, you've also had quarter over quarter growth amongst many different uh, uh, variables across the board for your company. Can you give investors understanding about the financial health of CLS Holdings, but also some of the things that your team's been able to implement in order to get there? It's a really good question, and it's something that we've worked hard on. Uh, I don't think anybody in, would have anticipated uh, what we've all been going through. Uh, the United States is, uh, has loosened up uh, substantially in the last month or two, but we, what we went through uh, was really extremely difficult because we were essentially an in-person environment. In other words, customers would come in. We had very little delivery. We had very little curbside. We had to pivot that very quickly uh, to... Uh, uh, a much broader curbside and delivery focus because they shut down uh, the stores for a period of time. And, and fortunately, we were able to, to make that pivot. Uh, and we were able to make that pivot uh, well. And um, as a result, we've seen revenues for us grow uh, really substantially. And I think part of that also has to do with the fact that we our business is catered to the locals. Um, so we're going to look for product on a daily basis that we can provide to our local clientele so that they know that they're getting a safe, regulated, tested product at the best possible prices. And I think our customers appreciate that. If something should cost $25, we're going to sell it for $25. We're not going to sell it for $35 or $40 because, again, we're, we're not catering to, let's say, that tourist person or the tourist, we're really catering to people that live and work uh, in this, you know, in, in, in the city. Uh, and again, that, that, that paid huge dividends uh, for us uh, as we uh, migrated through uh, the tumultuous times, you know, known as the, the, the COVID pandemic. And certainly there were probably no, there was no market in the country more adversely affected than Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I felt so much for it because I, I know other campus companies in there, but just friends uh, and family that live around that area. And it's amazing. It just came to a standstill, which you never see in Las Vegas, let alone uh, Nevada. But if you don't mind, if we can dive a little bit more into um, your revenue, profit, and uh, especially debt. I want to talk about debt as well, because I know uh, the last three years, you guys haven't had to do any financings. Everything that you've been able to grow, everything you've been doing is from cash from operations. And if you look at just you know your average basket size uh, for orders has been going up quarter for quarter. Your revenue has been going up quarter for quarter, especially when you're comparing. I believe uh, Q4 was your last quarter you just put out. Q4 compared to Q4 the year prior fantastic jumps there as well. Do you mind diving into that a little bit? Yeah, we're really proud of this. Um, and, and again, I, I, to me, uh, it goes into just, you know, KYC, knowing your customers, uh, which, which we clearly uh, have done. As it relates to the balance sheet um, or as it relates to the capital structure of the company, you are correct. We um, embarked on a uh, trans transaction about three years ago. We went to the capital markets to do something uh, in the state of Massachusetts. Unfortunately, uh, the transaction, which uh, did not work out, uh, and why it didn't work out is who cares? It didn't. We advanced uh, this company $5 million. Fortunately, we were able to recover 100% of our money, uh, as well as uh, a, a small amount of interest. And we're we're beyond that. So the lawsuit has been settled, and we've 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 moved beyond that. But we have not gone to the capital markets since uh, October of 2018. So we're coming up now on three years. It is July of uh, 2021. Uh, we um, our balance sheet right now has uh, about four or five million dollars uh, of cash and current assets. We really don't owe anybody any money. All of our bills are paid. The, we do have uh, an $18 million a convertible note that comes due at the end of uh, 2022, and um, it's very friendly. It's all at a fixed price, and um, we're hopeful with some of the things that we have to say and what we're to talk about 
in the next uh, kind of even next week or two, actually, uh, that we might see some appreciation in the stock. And hopefully uh, the price will appreciate to a point where, uh, you know, some of those people or most of those people will elect to convert as opposed to, um, you know, wanting their you know money back in December of uh, 2022. Either way, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move our way through this process. We pay a dividend in cash or current on that dividend. And um, the the cash flow that we generate at our operating subsidiaries allow us to run our business without any additional um, uh, 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 injection of capital. And I would say this, and I think this is really important, even though uh, it was a bit of a disappointment, um, uh, our foray into Massachusetts, what we what it taught us, the good news to that is what it taught us is we can be self-sufficient. There are so many of these companies that are out there grabbing uh, acquisitions and paying what we think are numbers that just don't make sense because at the end of the day, we are a business. We have a full, we have a complete and full responsibility to try to reward our stakeholders, which are our shareholders, our investors, um, our employees, uh, you name it, uh, and, and to take care of our vendors so that when we need product, we get product on a timely basis. All those things are important. And we're able to do that through the, the entities, uh, through the, the, the subsidiaries as they currently exist. We, we throw off um, a substantial amount of cash flow at the subsidiary level. And again, it's allowed us to do all this growth and all this growth has come organically. Um, and we think that there are some tremendous opportunities for us. Uh, and I hope in a week or two to be back here uh, and to explain them as well as to have announced them. Yeah, and I, I want to focus on something you just said there because it's really important uh, for investors to hear this because no company is without its challenges and no company is without its failures. It's how you learn from those and how you adapt from those that makes a good company from a bad company. If you don't mind, you know, you've been at the helm for a few years now. You just spoke about one challenge that you had. Can we speak about some of these challenges uh, and, and setbacks that you may have had over the years, but how you've learned from those and how that could actually be a positive for you moving forward? Yeah. We've learned a lot uh, in the last three years uh, being here uh, at CLS, if we learned a lot. Uh, and this is a very um, difficult business uh, to be involved in. Uh, it, um, but again, it's a privilege. We don't view uh, regulations in a negative uh, light. We view, tell us what to do, and we're going to act as responsibly as we can. And we do that. And, and I'm proud that you know we don't have any black marks against our public company. We don't have any black marks our, or as I like to say, hickeys uh, on, against these. We are, we are in really in full compliance. Additionally, what it has taught us is or shown us is that it really isn't um, a requirement because we don't have the balance sheet to be able to go compete, let's say, with those larger MSOs that are all going after uh, primary markets, you know, New York, New Jersey, that, those aren't places that, that we're going to be. But it has taught us to be able to prudently manage our balance sheet and how to grow this company organically, as well as take a look at opportunities that don't require copious amounts of capital, but do have high rates of return for us. And again, I'm, I'm hopeful that in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll be able to uh, enlighten and or embellish upon uh, uh, the story uh, that currently exists. But, you know, again, as it stands right now, this is an entity that generates about $2 million of net. I use the word net because taxes aren't ours. They belong to somebody else. So these are, are real dollars um, and these are U.S. dollars and we generate this consistently. Uh, the month of June, which just passed, uh, was, a, was, a, was a terrific month for us and you know, we'll, we'll certainly um, announce those numbers like we normally do, probably in the next week to 10 days. Uh, and again, the, we're, we're, we're just really hitting on all cylinders right now. And it's exciting. I think if you take a look at our CAGR, our cumulative annual growth rate, I think you'll see it's 45 to 50 percent on an annualized basis. Uh, and we see that, that continuing. And there's one more point that I want to make, uh, if I can, and that is that Right now, we're doing about 25 million U.S. dollars a year. 
without any additional capex, we can get this company to 45 or $50 million. So it's a matter of execution. It's not a matter of building or trying to acquire or having to go out and raise substantial amounts of money. We have the wherewithal to do it. And again, we can support uh, the business and we can support almost 2x the amount of business that we're currently doing today without any additional capex. And if anybody, you know, I'm sure people understand this, you know, you have fixed costs. But as you reach a certain number and you cross that threshold, your margins expand dramatically. Yeah, and, and again, much appreciated for going to detail like that. I think that's a lot of what you said there is very important for investors to hear. And it, we're going to be making a pivot for a moment because we're talking about the company, the management, uh, you know, some of the blue sky potential that's coming up. But I want to pivot now just speaking about the stock. You know, a lot of cannabis companies, especially those, uh, I believe, the MSOs that are really out there generating these revenues have great profit margins, as you've just been able to say that you, you do there. A lot of the times, though, at least at this, this current moment, their stock isn't quite following the successes of the company. You don't mind. I like to dive a little bit more into that because another thing people are asking is about, uh, you know, are there any skeletons in the closet? Is there cheap paper coming down the road? You know, what are these different things that they should be uh, concerned about? I'd love to talk about that because it's an exciting point because the fact that you did not go into raises of the last three years means there are no unlocks over the last three years. But if you don't mind diving a little bit more into your stock side of things now. Yeah. Uh, the stock is really simple to understand. We have 125 million shares outstanding. Uh, the float is uh, probably 50 or 60 million shares uh, the last time that I looked. We have no skeletons. We have no toxic notes. We have no debt, you know, short term debt. Uh, nobody's got you know, no pun intended, but nobody's got really, you know, a, a, a gun uh, pointed to our head. Uh, so we're able to really operate and function uh, in a capacity that allows us to make good decisions, not desperate decisions. Uh, and so that's that to me is is I think important. You know, if, if you're if you're an investor, um, I, I think that that is genuinely important. Additionally, uh, this company has approximately 10 million U.S. dollars that was invested into it by its founders, and those founders still have 100 percent of their shares uh, remaining. Nobody has sold a share, uh, even though they're, they're they, they certainly can. And founders uh, still own about 38 to 40 percent of of this company. So it's um we hope that that provides comfort. All of the founders have the same kind of equity that everybody else does, common shares. Uh our stock is probably 35 to 40 cents is kind of the average price that was paid for that that, that those shares and the stock is, you know, today is 18 20 cents US. I don't know what it is up in Canada because it doesn't trade all that much. But most importantly, we hope that by continuing to execute, we can garner the faith and trust of people that would like to take a chance on an undiscovered, undervalued, um, underfollowed, a small uh, MSO that we think that we can bring from 20 to 25 million in revenues where we are today. I think in the next two years, this company should be 100 million, should be generating 100 million dollars of annual revenue. And to, again, I want to emphasize, to get to that point does not require us to go and raise copious amounts of funds to be able to go and execute it. And that's to me, is exciting. Um, at least I think it is. I hope it is uh, exciting, maybe to potential investors or potential shareholders. Yeah. And a, and a key point there as well is what you're just speaking on. You just said, you know, currently doing around 22 to 25 million revenue um, in the course of a year and your current market cap right now, it, it keeps fluctuating, but I believe it's around 24, 25 million USD. So you're quite literally doing one to one for your net revenue and your current market cap. So I love hearing that as well. Well, I'd like to leave off on one last thing. You've mentioned a lot of these catalysts already throughout the interview, which I love to hear, but for any investor who's been watching this and expecting, you know, what can I expect in the coming weeks and months, uh, from CLS holdings, what would you have to say to them? So I think you're going to see continued really good results. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is I think that you're going to see um, some what I'll call uh, joint venture, some third party um, relationships to continue to foster that mindset to do transactions that are immediately accretive and don't require us to go and destroy the balance sheet or destroy the cap table in the process. We just won't do it. Uh, and so we will we will continue to block and tackle. 
Uh, and I, I'm hopeful in the next, call it 30 to 60 days, or as you guys north of the border like to say, move the puck, advance the puck. I hope that we'll continue to move the puck or advance the puck uh, and have some really meaningful uh, news uh, to be able to, to give to you all. And I just want to end on, on one note. Um, I talk about you know the, the future and, and the future upside, and I think the future and the future upside is potential. But I don't want to ignore the fact that there has been a great deal of progress. I mean, you've taken a company that was completely underperforming three years ago, doing five, six million dollars a year, whatever it was, to today where we're doing 20, 25 million dollars, whatever, in revenue. And we've done those things. We've learned a lot along the way. So where we are right now, if we did nothing, I think we can get the business to 40 or 50 million U.S. Now, if you bolt on some of these other opportunities that are out there, you really could get, you know, unintended, you get really a potential hockey stick. So fundamentally where we are today, I think the story is sound. And I hope that I can, you know, maybe add a little um, uh, sizzle uh, uh, as we go forward here uh, in the coming weeks. Well. Appreciate it very much, Andrew, uh, both for your time, but also just for going in such detail uh, with your company. Look very for, uh, much. I look forward to being able to continue to have these conversations as news releases come out, as you continue to push forward, as financials come out, and people can get a, that peek into how you've been able to do it over the last few months and and moving forward as well. Very excited for it, and uh, until the next time we have you on, I wish you a good day and thank you very much. Thank you very much. 